virtually, of course, but still, it's you know, Tbilisi. Here is the uh, the hero square, as we call it. Oh my God! You're already starting. Hold on, Vito. Hold on, that we get everybody here. Yeah. <laughs> you're yeah, like yeah, on waiting. fire. I'm waiting. Yeah, you're on fire. <laughs> I'm okay. excited. I'm yeah, excited. We, we're really excited to have you as well. So everyone, this is Vito. Let me just um, wait to get everyone because they always arrive maybe like within two, three minutes more. Vito, you are um, the project manager of the Movement Theater, which is quite a special place in yes. TB TBC. I still don't know how to pronounce it. Uh, in Georgia and Tbilisi, we were, just... and we were going to go and actually work from there. Uh, if yeah, yeah, we yeah. Stayed in in uh, Georgia, we we'll have come in your space, uh, which you're going to show us. Uh, and we're so grateful for your time, and we're really, really happy um, to, you know, visit uh, Georgia with you because we're not going to be able to go just now. So you propose to take us on a trip yeah. with your iPhone, and I think it's a great idea. So over to you. Yeah, yeah. I'm starting from the Hero Square right now because uh, I, it's the closest way to get to the theater, and also we're going to pass the road where a lot of theaters are, and it's a historical road in Tbilisi. Yeah, and I'm starting here from Freedom. I am in Hero Square, and this is historical because over here is a um, uh, let me show you. This is the first highest building in Tbilisi, which was constructed in, in the 60s, I believe. And it's like 11 stories up high, but it's, it was the highest, actually. Now, because of the Tbilisi was all, all like a um, uh, very, how to say, traditional kind of city. There were diverse cultures here. Asian and European, so the buildings were like uh, four or five stories in height. Um, so uh, I'll talk about uh, this city first, uh, tell you about its history. Uh, it was based in the uh, fifth century, I believe, and the legend behind the city and the legend behind it is that uh, our king was. Uh, hunting and he uh, caught a uh, bird who, you know, went straight down to the uh, waters and the water was boiling hot and uh, it got cooked and uh, the king liked the uh, the waters and then he based a city over here and it became the capital of Georgia soon after that. Uh, and uh, after, you know, many years passed, uh, Tbilisi was a very uh, how to say, strategic place uh, uh, to connect uh, Europe to Asia. So a lot of Asian merchants and European mer merchants came in uh, town and they built these uh, uh, buildings and also uh, made a connection uh, to a lot of countries over here. So there, you, here you can see many, many places uh, which are in uh, Asian uh, architectures and also European architectures. And uh, it's been like the center of the Caucasus ever since because, uh, you know, all roads were connected to Russia, to Turkey, to everywhere, you know. Uh, now we're passing the circus, but it's not visible because of the trees over here. Uh, so, and also the uh, architecture has changed a lot, uh, quite a lot after the years when the Soviets came in and they brought their own architectures, uh, which in my opinion is not that, you know, beautiful, but uh, it uh, served its purpose. So uh, they created this new urban areas. Vito, uh, Vito, can we, yeah. see, can we see the other side? Can we see as well the, where you yeah, are? Yeah, yeah. Maybe if you... I'm working on the right now, so I'm close to the bridge. Here is a circus, but it's not visible because of the trees. I'll show you it from the other side. Now we're close on the bridge now, and this uh, bridge is important because there is a river which divides the, country, the city into two sides. Uh, there's a left embankment and a right embankment of uh, TBC. 
mainly every you know main uh, things that uh, like ministries like tv stations and everything are on the right side but left is also very busy because all the markets and historical places are over there also so uh, talk about the youth uh, in Tbilisi. I'll talk about my life, how I, uh, uh, you know, grew up uh, and uh, the mentality that was going on over here uh, since my age. Because uh, I was born in the 90s, where uh, it was very difficult times here in Georgia because Soviet Union collapsed and um, uh, there was like a poverty going on over here, like people didn't have money. They used to stand in lines to get bread and stuff, so everything was going crazy. But growing up at that time is important because I developed a, uh, me and my friends, we developed very, uh, how to say, close relationship to each other, how to take care of each other and how to take care of the people who are among us. Uh, and. Uh, it's kind of inspired us to be who we are now and to reach as many people as we can throughout the world. Some of us went to study abroad, some of us stayed here. And we're working in an uh, environment where we meet a lot of people. So we uh, have that uh, thing that we know what uh, struggle is and we try to uh, take care of each other. So uh, youth here, the people, they are very diverse. Some friends uh, on the uh, very popular at the time I was uh, growing up. Some on the other road. Some, some started to study. Uh, divided the categories of people here. But uh, the thing that connects us uh, and uh, puts us in an uh, environment, like in one environment, is the art. And uh, we all love and enjoy art. We all love to enjoy music, to enjoy um, you know, movies, uh, spectacles, and theater and stuff. So we were uh, looking uh, and we were trying to to open a place where people you know, gather around and share their creativity and ideas. And there were not many places around, but uh, in times uh, it kind of developed itself. And so we actually um, find all those places in town where people could gather and uh, share their experiences and stuff. Now I'm on the bridge, I'll show you the bridge. So this is the bridge that we're gonna cross that divides the, uh, that's on top of the river which divides the city into two halves. We can see a new architectures over here, big skyscraper buildings with glass windows and stuff. Which is common in the uh, new age of Tbilisi. Vito, I wish I met you today and we walked together in <laughs> Tbilisi. Yeah. Really, hi. <laughs> I wish too. I, wish too. <laughs> I, did, I, I didn't have any idea that we were going to have this presentation in the streets. So <laughs> I would be too excited. Yeah, it would be more fun. <laughs> yeah. It would have been. Yeah. And so, uh, these uh, places. Now I'll show you the river, which is right over here. The trees are in way, but I'll try to walk faster. So this is the famous river Mkwari, which is dirty, but it's okay. Nobody swims in it. And this is this divides the city into two halves. You can see the the right side and the there's the famous TV station of Tbilisi. Yeah. So, uh, uh, about the places of 
the creative views and stuff. So yeah, uh, there are many places now in Tbilisi where artists, uh, beginners, also experts, and you know, just the people who love art, just you know, uh, hang out in one place and share with each other. Like uh, people, from different cultures, from different beliefs. Uh, we are united by this. Uh, we all so messed up if it's music, if it's uh, paintings or movies or theater or something. It doesn't matter, we're still, you know, united as one and we all feel like we're one. Uh, and uh, those kind of stuff kind of bothers the people who are in charge and who are in uh, government who decide, who think they decide, you know, things for us. They should be working for us instead of, you know, working. They should be working with us, you know. But yeah, and uh, those kind of stuff kind of uh, created the environment where uh, government officials like try to manipulate uh, youth into, you know, uh, telling them this place doesn't uh, suit you, that place doesn't suit you, they use drugs here, and etc. and etc. But, and then they, you know, started to great people on the streets which was a big mistake i believe but it's in it's, it's my opinion and yes uh, government people are yeah, they started to raid us in the um streets i was arrested twice for smoking marijuana i was enjoying the split uh, as i could say it but yeah, i was arrested Twice I had uh, a tough time because I was a uh, not I was a kid at the time and they pushed me really hard so they didn't quite uh, get with uh, you know with care they didn't uh, talk with me with care and stuff but uh, it's okay I survived it and uh, also my friends and we all kind of we will survive at this time so kind of uh, government changed their. Uh, uh, way of uh, talking with us later because we started to come out. We started to protest the things that uh, they were that were uh, taking freedom from us. So uh, we started to create this uh, uh, kind of so social uh, places. Uh, I, I mean, uh, social gathering. We started to test. We need more freedom. To uh, create, to inspire uh, each and every one of us, but uh, kind of they were not quite the government. I mean, they were not quite uh, appreciated to us. They were uh, still, you know, with these strict uh, laws that uh, uh, forbid us to, you know, uh, express ourselves the way we want. So. Uh, then we tried to, you know, push harder. We didn't care what they would do. We didn't care what they would say. So we kept on, you know, dancing, kept on creating and kept on uh, being free. Uh, so they didn't like it, which, which uh, uh, you know, transformed into raiding the clubs, trying to catch people who would, uh, you know, express their freedom the way they wanted. So then the uh, occasion of the Bassiani, uh, the famous, you know, protests began. And where, you know, we kind of, as a member of those protests, I kind of felt that we, the youth, uh, had the power to, uh, you know, unite and to control what uh, government would uh, and could do uh, for us, you know. we. I, uh, it, at the times, I kind of uh, had that thing that uh, I was not alone. These people were here with me. Like uh, I could raise my voice so that uh, anybody could hear, anybody could be inspired, who would want to listen. Uh, and it kind of uh, pushed my self-esteem. So I kind of be, became like uh, like a free person who could do or say whatever he could he wanted 
So it's uh, the famous Bastiani protest, as it were, uh, kind of gave the youth uh, the kind of move and the motivation to not be the kinds of, you know, pets that would uh, be like told what to do, when to sit, when to eat and stuff. Because we're grown-ups, we, we're the youth, we're the power of the country. And, uh, you know, people have to take that into the opinion. Now I am on the um, Marjanishvili Street, which is famous, I mean Armasenebeli Street, which is uh, famous for its theatres. This is like the Broadway of Tbilisi, because here is kind of like uh, more than 10 theatres. And this is the, it's like uh, Asian and European cultures and also Georgian architecture. Vito, I'm not, I'm not seeing kind of anything. Mess. I'm not seeing anything, but I don't know if it's only me. Or... Ah, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll show you right now. So this is the Broadway of uh, Tbilisi. Tbilisi. This is the Broadway of Tbilisi, yeah. Over there, there are many uh, theaters. We can see one is over here. Square. And this is also the way to get to Bastiani also. Uh, yeah, so we kind of, to get back to the situation of the youth in Tbilisi, uh, we kind of, how to say, uh, we have now the power of uh, expressing ourselves. We, you know, there are many artists who are inspired from that protest, who created their own materials based on those protests. Uh, there are artists who are coming to Tbilisi to play, who know that uh, the, those kind of stuffs happened here. Uh, and uh, they know that youth now have the power and uh, nobody can, can tell us anything anymore, except, you know, what they can do for us. But, uh, so we kind of uh, emerged into a society where uh, freedom is no, not a choice, but it's a, it's a will. So we can uh, be free as long as, as much as we want. Vito? Uh, Vito? Yeah. Is it, yes? um, is it possible to turn around your camera as well so we have this feeling that we are walking with ah, you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We yeah. can still hear yeah. you. We can hear you loud and clear. But it's kind okay. of, you know, it makes us feel like if we are walking close to you, which is quite something. Okay, all right. I'll hold it uh, this way. Uh, this is actually the road where when the... Uh, stadium is playing when our national team is playing every fans over here this like full of football fans who are cheering and supporting our national team these are like very old buildings who were built in 1800s who were built by merchants or uh, artists who wanted to live here they would create this kind of neighborhoods. We in Tbilisi, they call it the Italian neighborhoods, but uh, you can never find any kind of neighborhood in Italy like that. It's you know, like Tbilisian neighborhoods all around. Uh, now we're closing in on the stadium, our famous stadium, which is the biggest in Georgia. There it is. And underneath the stadium, there is also Bastiani. Yeah. This is also a theater over here. 
the sign says, welcome to Georgia, I'll show you. And you are all welcome to Georgia whenever you feel like coming here. <laughs> yeah, and uh, one thing about movement is that it's located uh, into a park. It's a, an amusement park, but uh, for the kids, you know, up to age like 12 or 14, but any kind of people gather there to chill and relax because the environment is so peaceful and healthy. But it's closed at the moment, which because I cannot get into get in the park, the main entrance. So I'll take you guys from the back. Uh, it's closed because of the uh, COVID-19 conditions here, which uh, mainly closed every uh, social places for people together here. I just want to make it clear to everyone that you are actually working for the movement theater, that we are not breaking in the movement theater. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll show you guys the theater. I'll get close to it. No, no, but no what I mean... <laughs> What I mean no, is no, I'm not going to break any law, no. <laughs> I'm not breaking any law. You walk there, basically. Yeah, yeah, That's I walk I mean. there. There is an, the main entrance is closed because uh, the, so that people cannot come inside. Yeah. But uh, I am the staff of the theater and also uh, we, like, I'm, a, this, I'm also the staff of the uh, park. It's, for me, it's okay to go inside. This is our theater's banners over here, posters, which show the, all the uh, performances we have. This is the front side, which is visible from the street. Movement theater. This is an entrance where uh, actors come out to relax and stuff. This is for the area. This area is for actors only. The cool thing about this theater is that uh, it was it is built in an old airplane hangar, and it's kind of a crazy atmosphere inside because all the old things and everything. The the you guys you guys could see it. You guys can. Feel it, I mean, because when you're inside that building, all the emotions and everything just comes you know, of its own way. Yeah. Um, and so, actually, this tell place. Us a bit uh, more, tell us a bit more about the movement theater. How did it come about? Yeah, yeah. I'm just, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so uh, the idea of creating a theater. Uh, you know, came to Kaha Bagurad's mind when he came from, he was actually an actor who was playing uh, all over the Europe. He was in uh, Germany, Leipzig. He was a member of the cast of the Leipzig Theater. And when he came back in uh, Georgia in 2001, he wanted, he had this uh, idea of creating a movement theater, which in which uh, people would uh, express their emotions and their uh, like conversations would be in movement like they don't uh, they didn't want to talk and they would express themselves with dance with or with the uh, pantomime and uh, just basic movements so the music is very essential to these performances and that's why uh, we have our own uh, composer who is very talented composer and there's, you know, a lot of uh, theaters in Tbilisi don't have their own composers, so we're kind of uh, uh, privileged by him that he works for us and creates all this authentic music for performance. Somehow, sometimes he works, uh, he creates the music for a performance, or there is a, uh, the music is created for the specific movement. So the idea of creating a theater was first, you know, hard because you could not get a building where you can perform and the building would be yours fully. So 
Kaha uh, had a team uh, with which uh, he just he would just go around uh, around the town and creating spaces, buildings, and uh, they would build their own uh, scenes uh, in the streets of Tbilisi, and they would perform there maybe times a day into the different locations of the city, uh, and then you know back to everybody's houses. Uh, and that times it was hard to perform because uh, actors would not be interested in performing in the streets, but uh, somehow he managed to get the team who would uh, uh, later, you know, uh, be the founders of the movement theater. And in 2011, 10 years later, he uh, bought this old airplane hangar, which was at the uh, old uh, kind of uh, army uh, garbage place. You know? But he, he bought it and then he uh, got to the place where he wanted to build it. And uh, Tbilisi City Hall gave him the place in this park where now I'm entering the park over here. They gave him the place in this park where the park was already famous uh, because people uh, would come here to relax because the environment here is very uh, chill and cool. Uh, and the fun fact about this park is that this was built uh, maybe in 16th century, if I'm not mistaken. This was built by a uh, Persian Shah Shah's uh, some kind of dude who was running the Georgia because at the time we were conquered by Persians. And uh, his name was Mushtaidi. Uh, so he built this uh, uh, park for, the, for his wife. He would live here with his wife and this all the territory with the trees and everything was, belongs to his wife. No, this is this is the park right now. There are like uh, amusement places over there for the kids to have fun. I will show you around the park right now. And later, the uh, the Persian guy left because next step would be the Russian annexation. And when the Russians took over, he was not needed anymore. And uh, he left back to Persia and the park stayed so the park needed a, an owner and it uh, how to say transferred to city's ownership so the people could own it and uh, it was open for everybody to visit and anybody is welcome here to come uh, when the times are uh, you know not so crazy like now when there is no uh, quarantine, here are a lot of people gathering, you know, mostly couples. So this is couples' favorite area. They sit around, just talk, drink coffee or something refreshing. And this is the park. And we're going to the theater right now, towards the theater. Ah, and also uh, in this part is a first I'll show you right right now. There is the first uh, children's railway, which was opened in 1881, I think. And this is the world's first uh, uh, children's railway, which means that it only works for children and it doesn't take you anywhere but uh, circles around the uh, around the park. Well, there it is, the station of the railway this is the first first uh, how do you call this I, I don't remember the English name for it the first uh, uh, wagon of the train that left in 1880 yeah 
and there is the new one which leaves every day on five o'clock and returns in seven minutes. <laughs> this is the main entrance of the park. Right. Now let's go to the theater. And so when this building was open, uh, they were, like Kaha already had uh, his own building, so he would start creating his own performances with uh, what he wanted and then it kind of got popular right away. Like people would come and uh, watch this because uh, it was popular on the streets. Everybody, if there was a commotion or something loud music was going on in the street, you would know that movement theaters march was coming your way and all this uh, clowns and everybody, you know, carnivals were created just for the people in the streets. So it boosted up the people's uh, motivation to you know, work and they would get happy and positive throughout the day. Uh, and now we're coming. So when the building was uh, built, people just uh, came on their own. It got popular right away, like it reached uh, high levels of popularity. So there were tickets being bought like uh, two or three weeks after the show were, was performance. Uh, and it kind of became the place for youth to uh, chill and, you know, stay around. Ah, there's the building. There is the director himself. And this is the way it looks from the inside, the entrance. So, yeah. It's amazing. This is this is the founder of the right here, Kaha Bakura, the founder Hi. of the Hi, movement theater. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> hello, 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 <laughs> hello. Hello, hello. Hi, Europa. I'm still a Gashli. Oh, everywhere. We come from... Yeah, everywhere. They come. Lucky, lucky small. <laughs> now I'll show you the inside of the <laughs> movement theater. This is the foyer. Hello, hello, Duce. This is the foyer. And all the props that is needed to, for the performances are over here in the foyer and whatever is needed, we take him, we take it to the stage and then perform. Here is the bar over here and uh, the band is standing. On Tuesdays, we have these jam sessions and bands places over there. There's, there's a stage up over there. So I'll show you the inside. Now if anybody's in it, let's see. Yeah, okay, there's a lot of mess. <laughs> but it's okay. This is the stage. Over here. The place where magic happens. And as you can see, there, there are no uh, chairs like uh, in order. We don't have it. Because, uh, we perform right uh, in front of the audience. And I just actually fly in this. This space, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. they fly over here. <laughs> That's why it's flying. Yeah, they do these all aerial shows, like the crazy men every, you know, weekends. So this is the place. This is where the, our lighting guy sees, sits. The music over there. Crazy infrastructure. <laughs> yeah. Now I'll talk mostly about the theater. So, uh, when like a couple of uh, years ago, this place became very, very popular among youth because uh, there were uh, improvisational music uh, nights was happening here, like jazz music and uh, folk jazz and funk and everything and uh, it was free for all to join and uh, free for all artists to come and play uh, all the artists from all over the 
come actually for uh, uh, it at the time would come here would uh, perform it was a jam session uh, so that everybody could uh, come with their own instruments play whatever they want and uh, it kind of merged into a like a, a musical harmony and um, all this chaos created uh, the harmony which inspired and a lot of people were like you could see a lot of people uh, telling each other that they love them <laughs> a lot of marriages happened here a lot of breakups and everything but mostly there's love there's mostly love over here so uh, kind of got popular through the uh, youth because uh, they would come here hang around and they would uh, talk and uh, they would actually make shows over here some kind of shows uh, later before i joined the theater after I joined, uh, well, <laughs> yeah, and uh, uh, after I joined, well, uh, the theater was already in a lot of success, and I became a part of those uh, success. We published an album of our composer. Uh, theater for music. I will later upload those songs to you guys to listen to. Um, I will give it to you for free. And uh, then we uh, created this uh, musical nights where we would uh, now call our uh, famous or you know beginning to get famous, and we would create those kind of nights for them to. Um, how to say, uh, come and uh, play to let other people enjoy their music. So every Tuesdays we have this uh, uh, program of uh, jam session and uh, now it's called an improv music because we perform what's uh, best for the people and mainly people uh, tell us, you know, with their dances and with their movements what kind of music they want. And we produce those kind of music to them. And then, then the theater thing, uh, these theater plays kind of uh, got famous also. We were called on a multiple uh, festivals uh, around the uh, Europe. We were in Frankfurt uh, performing for Georgian days. Uh, there was a uh, festival where Georgia presented uh, itself uh, with uh, different types of cultures. and. Uh, we were also part of that. We performed in uh, Armenia on the Shakespeare Festival. We also performed on, in, um, in Minsk, uh, or there was a student festival, and uh, we also were there. And we had this uh, uh, invitations from Italy now, but we couldn't go because of the conditions. And uh, it's mostly good for the. Uh, oops. Uh, mostly good uh, for the foreigners to come here because there is no language barrier and uh, uh, because every performance is performed uh, non-verbally uh, with the movement. So if tourist comes here in uh, Tbilisi, this is like the first or second uh, destination that they would visit. Um, and because of its multicultural uh, place everybody likes to be here so they come here and hang around and uh, just be who they want to be uh, and uh, now uh, uh, the last uh, program we had was uh, the we staged a play with the American Embassy uh, who uh, uh, funded the play and we created this uh, Georgian American uh, kind of uh, play. It's called the Tamada in Manhattan. Tamada is a, a toastmaster of Georgian traditional uh, feast, uh, and uh, it kind of somehow Tamada is uh, uh, Tamada traveled to New York and is confused of what's yeah Supra Supra. Yeah. Um, somehow Tamada would. 
get into Manhattan in the crazy environment of New York and is confused and stuff. And we were trying to tour that um, uh, performance throughout Georgia, but uh, it was not able because of this uh, quarantine situation now. But we're planning to do it next year, and I think we're going to start it in September. And I think we're going to create more and more beautiful uh, performances for the people. Uh, mostly, people are not interested in theater in uh, Tbilisi, but uh, these kind of performances are very interesting for the youth because uh, they would hear this amazing uh, music, which is uh, specifically written for this performance, and they would see this uh, crazy movements, how the actors describe themselves, how they uh, describe the emotions. Thing. So uh, the youth kind of uh, come here to get inspired and to... Uh, uh, view this uh, awesome and magnificent performances. I don't want to be too, uh, how to say, like, uh, too keen on <laughs> the theater I work in, but it really blew my mind because the first time I was here, I was as a spectator. I told myself that I wanted to work here with these people to create some, something new. Uh, so our uh, policy, like uh, the way we work, is uh, mostly uh, kind of American style uh, because uh, uh, we believe that uh, theater in America is more uh, popular. And we also have this partner theater in the uh, USA. It's called the Cinetic Theater, which is in the same kind of uh, genre as we are. Uh, so they are also uh, staging a movement uh, plays like we do and we kind of, they kind of opened up uh, after this theater opened up so uh, and also the staff over there is mostly Georgians uh, and we're partners with that theater and we uh, work in that uh, kind of management. Uh, because it helps uh, our actors and also we have a don't because we are a uh, self uh, how to say it uh, uh, the governments are not funding us we create it is like a business uh, the cultural business type uh, because we work with uh, if the spectators come then we have money if they don't we're broke that's why we got to work hard and we got to work twice as much because uh, um, we need to we need people to come here and to build the performances we stage and it kind of uh, gets popular because uh, there are a lot of shows in Tbilisi like God Talent type of shows where they uh, we go there as a helpers because if uh, they need a uh, kind of uh, flying type of uh, performance if they want to get somebody in the air where the right types to call uh, i should share yeah i would share the performance videos of course i will uh, i had this um, idea of sharing the faust with you which is very popular here uh, this performance is really popular it's uh, in a uh, Puto style uh, performance. We talk, we talk because there is only 15 minutes left uh, before we have um, a workshop with Ketevan, uh, who you yeah. might know maybe uh, from the yeah. inclusive uh, dance group. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know her actually. I, <laughs> yes. I don't know her personally, but I know her work because. Well, uh, so she is start, she's starting in 15 minutes, but maybe there is some questions. So if everybody has got, if anyone has got questions, then uh, yeah, is my thing yeah, yeah. because my internet is too bad, Laulu. That's why I'm trying to maintain the conversation. But I'm here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um, I was going to say, do you want to pick up some questions? Anyone has got some questions for Vito? I mean, I have an obvious one, which is basically you mentioned that, of course, you rely on the audience to maintain the movement theater. So what's the kind of 
you know, what's the backup plan, if any, at the moment? <laughs> there is no backup plan. We just <laughs> go straight ahead. We create for the people because we know kind of, you know, the years of uh, the um, work and the thing, it just gave, inspired us. We and we just created for them. We know that they want to hear this good quality and high quality music. We create that type of music. We know that they would, uh, you know, appreciate seeing this performance, and we will create this performance. We also stage classics here. We have uh, also Shakespeare over here in uh, the Tempest. If you know the play, we have staged also classics, and we have staged also the. Uh, uh, plays which you know were created here in movie theater, but uh, the show over here that is uh, produced is uh, remarkable. So uh, people are coming, and we also have a donations. We have partner organizations who would help us and donate some uh, if we need. Not like uh, we're calling them. We need this money and they transfer, but they should. Uh, Places where people would, uh, you know, donate whatever they want, and uh, it kind of helps the production. So, how can people help at the moment? Hello. I've lost you. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. I was lost yeah. in the virtual uh, internet. Uh... <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, at the moment, we don't have the site where we accept donations, but uh, because we're, in, we're not in need of that because government said that they would help us. But <laughs> I don't know if something uh, is going to go wrong, we're going to open some donation sites or something whatever it is and we would accept anybody's donations but we mostly rely on audience like and can, when they come and vito can you show us because you mentioned that it's inside a, uh, a plane right where is the plane yeah. ah there is no plane this is an airplane hangar this is the garage of airplane i can show you a little plane which is <laughs> hanging in the uh for yeah, but there's no actual plane here. There was, I mean, this is an airplane hangar, but not anymore over here. This is our plane. See? <laughs> ah, it's coming down. <laughs> yeah, this is our guy who talks what he wants. Yeah. And what so is going you, on upstairs? What is there upstairs? Uh, upstairs is an office where we work with the staff. Can, can we see the office? Or is there people? Yeah. There? Uh, no, they're not. And I'll show you. No problem. Yeah. I'll show Sorry, you. Sorry, I'm, I'm being a bit noisy, you know. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. I mean, I'm being noisy. Like, I, I, I'd li I like to see everything. <laughs> ah, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> This is this is the office. Ah, this is the schedule nice. when you guys were gonna come. Oh, it's still over there. And this is the balcony. Crazy guy sleeps over there. Yeah, I can imagine everybody on the balcony at the moment, especially Laulu yeah. or Gaspar, or you know. Uh, this is Jan as well. This is this is the that we are very proud of. This is called Duruji. This is the highest uh, trophy that theater can ever get, and this was presented to us for the um, uh, for the music, the best music for a play. It was the Divine Comedy soundtrack. Theater from up here also. This is where the lightning guy sits. Yep, the stage over there and everything. Uh, do you have more questions? 
or should I just blob whatever in my mind? I mean, you're doing pretty good so far. I mean, what about the, I mean, I was going to ask the toilets if they got like any special decoration because I know that the toilet is a big thing, at least at the University of the Underground. Yeah, we do have a, we, I'll show you uh, the toilet like because special, it's, there is special love messages in general in toilets or there is some kind of, especially if ah. it's run by the youth, no? Don't you have like a lot of secret messages going on in the toilet? No, nothing secret in toilet. Toilet is a toilet. <laughs> <laughs> toilet is a toilet. This is actually adapted to the uh, handicapped people. The toilet and also, I'll show you the entrance of the toilet. There we go. And there are a lot of posters here. This is a pulp fiction room where you go in and you might not come back. Dustin Hoffman is waiting for you inside. And this is the big room where the drama is happening while you do whatever you do. <laughs> John Lennon <laughs> greets you after you come out and then Freddie Mercury says, on your way, pal. <laughs> and then you leave the toilet. You, yeah. have a, you have a question here from Andy Knapp. Ah, question? Andy Knapp, Andy. where are you? I don't know who you are, and Andy. Oh, sorry, that's it's me, it's Rupert. I don't, I don't know why it's showing my... my yeah, sorry, it's given my... Um, hi. Hi, ah, music-wise. Rupert is our opera this... singer. Um, ah. yeah, no, hey, thanks for the presentation. I was just thinking, um, this approach sounds really interesting. Um, like in Europe, especially generally quite familiar with like uh, this, which doesn't stick to like a text or a script anymore. But um, obviously, it sounds as you said that music is a very important part of the way you make shows. But I was just wondering, does that does that include song? Um, and if so, do you? Yeah, I mean, is that is is the no language, the no text? Thing very strict, so you don't use song as it will purely instrumental music. Or... Uh, for the performances, no, we do not use the songs. Uh, ah, we okay. we use uh, mostly mu just music. But on the jam sessions, we have singers who sing. Yeah, I was just wondering. Cause I know sometimes it's interesting how, like, with songs, as the amazing thing about music is often we like songs that we in a in a language we don't understand. And, um, yeah. Um, yeah, but for the, but I just, yeah, interested by for the, the performances, there are no songs, but we sing, you know, on the jam sessions, we yeah. sing in different languages that there are people from Germany, from uh, UK, from anywhere who would come, who would want to sing, they would go up and sing and perform in any language they would like. If it suits the music, it suits for the people. And, um, I have another question as well, like the, the shows you make, is it always the same team of people or do you have different directors and different performers coming or is it like a, is it like a house method? We have a, we have two directors actually, okay. uh, Gaha Bakuradze and Buste Bakuradze, uh, they are related, they are father and son. This is like oh, wow. a mostly a family type of theatre hmm. uh, and they would stage uh, different kind of shows, which, whichever they want. Artistic director of the theater is uh, Yosef Bagurazi, son of the founder, Gaha Bagurazi. Okay. Yeah. Cool. I hope and, you come visit one day. And what happened, yeah, 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 you should, you should. What happened, Vito, if you get someone like me that sings horribly bad and just take on the stage? <laughs> we would advise you to not to sing. Or if you're drunk enough, go ahead. You know, nobody <laughs> cares. <laughs> Well, maybe, we this. maybe it's lucky for you that we never made it to uh, the movement here. No, 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 no. <laughs> nope. No. Nope. Okay. I you still have, wish you were here. You have a question from Laulu. Laulu, where are you? Um. Hi, Vito. Hi. I was asking. Uh, yeah. What are the acoustics like? Because it's a puma hanger. I'm intrigued. Ah, acoustics, it's kind of, it's perfect. We have the speakers, uh, you know, we have the speakers over here and also in the back. And we would, you know, uh, I, I don't know how to do it, but our composer creates it like the environment where we can hear music 
properly and very good. Well, actually, when you are in the stage, you would feel that the music is coming from your, uh, coming from your like self, because you're in the center of the music and in the center of the performance. Actually, uh, there are performances where the um, cast is walking towards you and be, they come from behind you, so you get the emotion that you are inside of the play as you watch it. So acoustics are great, <laughs> and, you know, speakers do their job uh, pretty well. Can you sing or you're not really like into the... I'm not a good singer, no. I can't sing. I, I, can, I can move, but uh, singing is not my, my favorite thing to do. <laughs> Although I sing sometimes at home when I'm drunk, but... <laughs> I'm kind of shy to perform with you know you all these people around the world. <laughs> <laughs> you shouldn't be. You've uh, you've done amazing so far, like incredible, incredible tour. Any last question? Last question for Vito before we have to leave hey. it. Free. Ah. <laughs> Can I, Vito? Actually, it's not a question. Uh, uh, I wanted to say that I love. The moment theater and last year I had something like an obsession. I was going to contact uh, the moment theater and offer myself as a volunteer uh, in the beginning, but then unfortunately I become very soon. I become very very busy and I could not follow my yeah, dream. I but I and after pan after pandemic I will definitely contact you. <laughs> of, of course. <laughs> Maybe we can follow. So yeah, you, yeah, we can collaborate. No problem. Well, Vito, with that, I like, will be happy. We are. She's. Ah, she's. Uh, she's actually a very inspiring person from youth in Georgia because she inspired a lot of people to express themselves. Oh, so thank you, you so much. <laughs> the door is always welcome for you. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. <gasps> Yeah, yeah, well, we wish we could meet her as well. We could meet all of our research students, but uh, yeah. Anna is yeah. one of our research uh, students, everybody, researchers from the program. And she's from Georgia as well. Maybe you can say a few words, Anna. Well, okay, so me? <laughs> yeah, uh, if, uh, I think like other researchers already know me, but... Uh, for the, for the visitors. Uh, I'm a uh, human rights activist in Georgia, and dance was, uh, was the, one of the crucial, the most crucial parts of my uh, self expression and activist, uh, activist experiences. And like, um, dance was like the main tool for me to. Uh, start talking and start discussing about really important things. So yeah, that's why I'm here. Actually. <laughs> <laughs> and you are following this entire program, and it's been quite intense so far. But Vito, yeah, yeah. we are so grateful for your time. So grateful for sharing with us a tour of. Uh, let me uh, let me tell you this with my eyes on. Um, so grateful for this incredible tour you gave us. You know, I uh, I was very emotional when you said that. Ah. Thank you so much. Very emotional Thank you. tour as Thank well. You Thank you for sharing the beauty of the place as well. Okay. You're well, welcome. Vito, you're you're always welcome. welcome to visit. Well, we will definitely come and visit as soon as this is over. Let's be optimist, yeah, everyone. Yeah. Let's be <laughs> optimist as much as we can. So, <laughs> Vito, if you want to stay, you are more than welcome to stay. Oh, oh. We have uh, Katevan, are you here? Ah, I can see you. Yes, here you go. Yeah, hello. How are you? Le yes, uh, we are good. Where are you? I'm trying to pin your video. Hi, Katie, another Georgian. I'm so happy today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so everyone we are having today our tour of uh, TBLC, you know, I mean, all of 
you know, Katevan, Vito, you would have met if we were in Georgia, of course, because this week was supposed to be the week where we take all of the researchers in Georgia. But then this time, it's a bit different. So, Katy, it's such a pleasure to have you with us. I'm going to introduce you a bit. Thank you. Uh, and I'm, let me just like 